The story starts with Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, going to the Heavenly Kingdom to meet Su Yi, the daughter of the Jade Emperor. They had become good friends when they met on Earth before. Su Yi warmly welcomes Sun Wukong, even though he's known as a demon. But their happy reunion is suddenly interrupted by the Heavenly Soldiers. These soldiers want to punish Sun Wukong for coming into the kingdom without permission. They get ready to fight with their weapons drawn. Sun Wukong isn't scared and mocks the soldiers, refusing to step back. This leads to a big fight. Su Yi wants to help Sun Wukong, but the soldiers stop her and tell her to go away. Even though there were more heavenly soldiers, Sun Wukong held his own against them. He faced many attacks and got trapped, but his strong power let him keep fighting. Just when he thought he might actually win, he felt that Erlong Shen, the most powerful warrior god in the heavenly kingdom, had arrived. Erlong showed up like a quick lightning bolt during the battle. He easily turned around Sun Wukong's attack as soon as he got there. These two legendary fighters started a really tough battle. The force of their fight shook the sky and the ground, and their hits echoed everywhere. Sun Wukong, even though he was a huge ape, knew that beating Erlong wouldn't be simple. He clenched his teeth and used all his strength to fight, with his mind set on winning. As Sun Wukong became even more determined, Erlong called upon his ultimate weapon and started a bunch of attacks that seemed like they could destroy the whole battlefield. Su Yi, who was caught in the middle, almost got hit by those attacks. Sun Wukong acted quickly and used his speed to keep Su Yi safe from danger. He carried her to a safe place and told her to wait for him to come back before jumping back into the fight. While the battle kept going, Erlong started to feel like he was losing against Sun Wukong in his true form. The big ape's power was really incredible, and he was as strong as the mightiest warrior gods in heaven. Sun Wukong felt certain he was about to win when a super bright golden light filled the sky and Buddha's palm showed up. Suddenly, Sun Wukong couldn't move anymore, his power couldn't fight against the divine strength. Even though things were really bad for him, Sun Wukong was smart and managed to keep Su Yi safe as she tried to jump into the fight. Because of the super strong attack, Sun Wukong had to go back to his regular form. Since he lost the fight, he got punished by being locked up in Wuzi Mountain. This happened because he was friends with Su Yi, who was a goddess, and also because he had broken into the Heavenly Palace and caused big damage. Not long after, the god Rulei came to visit Sun Wukong in his prison. Rulei told Sun Wukong that he was Su Yi's teacher, and the one who used the powerful Buddha Palm technique that beat Sun Wukong. Rulei came up to Sun Wukong and asked if he wanted to play chess. But Rulei also wanted to hear about the first time Sun Wukong met Su Yi and the mess that happened in the Heavenly Kingdom afterward. Sun Wukong was still upset about losing to Rulei before, so he suddenly attacked him. But it surprised Sun Wukong that Rulei didn't even seem bothered by his hits. Eventually, Sun Wukong had to give up and agree to Rulei's request. While they played chess, Sun Wukong told the story of how he first met Su Yi. He talked about how Su Yi quietly came down to Earth and accidentally found Huago Mountain where he lived. She liked the clear river that ran through the mountain, even though she didn't know about the place. While she was playing in the river, a mean fish monster suddenly attacked her, trying to eat her. Su Yi tried her best, but she was almost drowning when Sun Wukong saw and jumped in to save her. Su Yi was so thankful and said she was a princess from the Heavenly Kingdom, visiting Earth for the first time. Sun Wukong introduced himself and told her they were on Huango Mountain. But before they could chat more, some Heavenly Soldiers showed up to take Su Yi back to the palace. Sun Wukong tried to help and keep Su Yi safe, but the soldiers attacked him instead, and that started a big fight. Worried about Sun Wukong's safety, Su Yi stepped in to calm things down. She promised to go back to the Heavenly Kingdom to make sure nothing bad happened to her new friend. But even though they agreed on this, Su Yi secretly kept visiting Sun Wukong at Huago Mountain. Every time she came, their friendship got stronger. Then one day, Sun Wukong asked Su Yi if she wanted to stay with him on Huago Mountain forever. It turned out she had the same idea all along. Right then, she admitted that she was a goddess from the Heavenly Kingdom. She told Sun Wukong she had to stay in the Heavenly Realm forever. Su Yi's eyes were full of hope as she wished for Sun Wukong to become a wise and fair god in the future. She gave him a gift and quickly left worry that the heavenly soldiers might catch her. Months passed, and Sun Wukong felt more and more uneasy without Su Yi around. So he decided to visit her in the heavenly kingdom. When they finally saw each other again, Su Yi was surprised to find Sun Wukong in the heavenly realm. She explained that security had gotten tighter, making it hard for her to sneak away. Even so, they spent time together, enjoying each other's company. But their peaceful time didn't last long. The heavenly soldiers found out Sun Wukong was there, and chaos erupted. Sun Wukong ended up being punished and sealed in Wuzi Mountain. Rulei came to Sun Wukong, who was feeling really sorry about things. Rulei told him to stop being so mad and find a way out of his problems. Rulei said he'd let Sun Wukong go if he could win at chess. 
Soon Wukong tried a lot of times over a thousand years and finally figured out the right moves to win the chess game. After that, Rulei gave Soon Wukong a new job. He had to go with a Buddhist monk named Tang Sanzang on a journey to the west. They had to get the Buddhist scriptures. Rulei promised that if they finished the task, Soon Wukong would be set free and could see Su Yi again. So Soon Wukong joined Sanzang and his disciples Zhu Bajie and Shou Wujing on the journey. They also had a white horse for Sanzang to ride. The trip to the west was really hard. Sanzang and his companions had to deal with lots of problems and mean demons that wanted to hurt them. But Soon Wukong and his buddies were strong and brave. They faced each problem with courage and determination. Finally, they get to where they were headed. There's a big wall of fire guarding a special scripture they need. Sanzang decides to deal with this last challenge alone and Soon Wukong and the others wait outside. But Soon Wukong is really worried about Sanzang, so he can't help himself and goes in to help. With both of them working together, they win the battle and get the holy scriptures. These scriptures look like a shiny lotus that's full of bright light. Su Yi is super excited to find out if Soon Wukong did well, so she hurries to her dad's room. But there, she discovers that her own dad, the Jade Emperor, is planning something really bad. She's really shocked and decides to go tell Rulei about what's happening. But before she can do what she wanted, the Jade Emperor catches her and sends her away to the underworld. Rulei soon finds out that Sugi is gone and goes on a mission to find her. He really wants to keep his promise and bring the two of them back together. When Rulei talks to the Jade Emperor about this, he's shocked to hear that Sugi has supposedly died from a weird sickness. Even though they can't believe it at first, he starts looking into it more and finds out some strange things about her death. Rulai thinks there's more to the story, so he's brave and goes to the underworld to look for Su Yi. He wants to find out what really happened and bring the truth to light. Word about Sun Wukong's success spreads fast in the Heavenly Kingdom, where Su Yi is eagerly waiting for him to come back. When he finally arrives, the Monkey King gives the scriptures to the Jade Emperor and feels really proud of finishing his job. Even though Rulai is super strong and liked in the Heavenly Kingdom, he's weak and can't do much in the Underworld. It takes away his energy and makes him not so strong. But he doesn't give up. He keeps looking for Su Yi, wanting to find out the truth. Rulai meets King Yama, the ruler of the Underworld. King Yama wants to know why Rulai is there. Rulai tells him that he's trying to find Su Yi and bring her back to the world of the living. King Yama feels bad but says he doesn't know where Su Yi is. He explains that people who get sent to the underworld without dying become Grim Reapers. They look different and can't remember much about their past. Rulei is sad, but he doesn't give up. He goes back to his place and decides to keep searching for Su Yi, even though it's hard. While Sun Wukong and San Zhang are on their way to the Heavenly Kingdom, Sun Wukong keeps having a strange dream. In the dream, he talks to the special Lotus, and it begs him not to take it to the Jade Emperor. The Lotus says that there will be big trouble in both heaven and on earth if it's taken away from where it's supposed to be in the west. When Sun Wukong wakes up, he tells Sanzang about the dream. Both of them feel worried and unsure after hearing about it. Sanzang thinks the dream might be the work of demons trying to mess up their mission, but they don't give up. They keep going and finally get to the Heavenly Kingdom. The Jade Emperor and other heavenly people welcome them, but Sun Wukong gets suspicious when he doesn't see Su Yi or Ru Lai anywhere. Sanzang was almost giving the special lotus to the gods when suddenly Sun Wukong came forward and grabbed it. He looked really sure of himself and said that the gods had to do their part and bring him and Su Yi back together if they wanted the lotus back. The Jade Emperor heard this and told Sun Wukong that he couldn't talk to the gods like that. He ordered Sun Wukong to give back the lotus right away. Even though the Jade Emperor said this, Sun Wukong didn't listen. He even put the lotus into his own body to keep it safe. This made things more serious and the Jade Emperor told Erlong to fight Sun Wukong. Other gods had to deal with Sanzang and his disciples. Sun Wukong and Erlong had a really tough fight, hitting each other hard. But to everyone's surprise, Sun Wukong was winning against Erlong and he hadn't even used all his strength yet. In a tough situation, a god named Sha Xin came up with a plan. He told Sanzang to use a spell to make Sun Wukong weaker. Sun Wukong kept telling Sanzang that giving up the Lotus was a trap. But Sanzang wasn't sure if he should follow the god's idea. But things were really serious, so Sanzang had to make a hard choice. Seeing that Sanzang was unsure, Sha Xin did something even bigger. He told the other gods to hurt Zhu Bajie and Shou Wujing and said he'd kill them if Sanzang didn't listen. With no other option, Sanzang had to use the spell like Sha Xin told him. Soon Wukong felt a lot of pain because of the spell and was in really bad shape. When this happened, Erlong took the chance to attack Soon Wukong with his spear, which killed him. After Sun Wukong was defeated, Erlang got the lotus from his body and gave it to the Jade Emperor. 
At the same time, Rulei watched from far away, but he couldn't do anything because the rules of heaven stopped him. Even though he really wanted to help, he couldn't change what happened. Even though Sun Wukong was beaten physically, the Jade Emperor knew his spirit was still dangerous. So the Jade Emperor decided to lock it up under the ocean, where it would stay forever. But Rulei found out about the Jade Emperor's bad actions and decided to do something about it. He fought really hard against the Jade Emperor to take the Sacred Lotus. He wanted to bring it to Tianyu Mountain, where a strong dragon clan lived. When he got the Sacred Lotus, Rulei gave it to King Tianyu. He told the Dragon King to keep it hidden from everyone, even the gods. Even though Rulei was hurt from fighting the Jade Emperor, he didn't stop. He went to a mountain to heal and recover his strength. A few years went by and King Tianyu was walking with his daughter, Xiao Yu. They found a hurt white wolf while they were out. Xiao Yu felt really bad for the wolf and put her magic necklace on it. The necklace was special and it made the wolf all better. After a while, the wolf wasn't a wolf anymore. It turned into a guy named Bai Long, all because of the magic necklace Xiao Yu put on him. Now Bai Long was a young man. He talked and acted like a human which impressed the earth god, Tuti. He and Xiao Yu, the princess who helped him, became really good friends. One day, Bai Long was exploring the forest when he saw a bright gold light coming from the sky. He followed it and found out it was coming from King Tian Yu's palace. Tuti noticed the bright light too and knew it meant the soldiers from the Heavenly Kingdom were attacking King Tian Yu's place. Tuti told Bai Long to leave and save himself because they couldn't win the fight. But Bai Long didn't listen. Instead of leaving, he decided to go to the palace and warn Xiao Yu and her family. Meanwhile, King Tian Yu was making a weapon when his son Yu Zhang told him that the Jade Emperor knew about the special lotus on Tian Yu Mountain. The Jade Emperor sent Erlong and his soldiers to get the lotus. King Tian Yu got ready for the fight and told his son to prepare their troops for the heavenly soldier's attack. Not long after, Erlong and his soldiers got to King Tian Yu's palace. They wanted the lotus, but King Tian Yu said he didn't know about it. Erlong ordered his soldiers to attack King Tian Yu and his army. Just then, Bai Long showed up. He said he wanted to help King Tian Yu and his dragon warriors fight the heavenly soldiers. In the beginning, King Tian Yu and his son Yu Zhang were doing really well. They easily beat the heavenly soldiers who had come to attack. Yu Zhang was super strong because he got his dad's dragon spirit. He could knock down lots of enemies with just one hit. But then King Tian Yu started having trouble when he fought Erlong. Even though he turned into a huge dragon, he couldn't beat Erlong. While Bai Long was busy in a big fight, he suddenly got distracted. A soldier was about to hurt Xiao Yu. Right away, Bai Long went to save her. But the soldier took advantage and tried to hurt Bai Long. Just in time, Yu Zhang showed up and saved Bai Long and his sister. Yu Zhang saw his dad lose to Erlong, so he got Bai Long and Xiao Yu out of there really fast. While Erlong had defeated King Tian Yu, we saw Yu Zhang running away. In no time, Erlong grabbed his bow and shot an arrow that hit Yu Zhang, making him fall in a distant wild place. Yu Zhang was really hurt and knew he didn't have much time left. He called Bai Long over and told him the truth about the special lotus. He explained why the Jade Emperor and the Heavenly Soldiers were so desperate to find it. Yu Zhang told Bai Long that the special lotus was actually Xiao Yu. A long time ago, King Tian Yu had known that the Jade Emperor would find out at the lotus on Tian Yu Mountain. To trick the Jade Emperor and the soldiers, King Tian Yu turned the lotus into a little girl named Xiao Yu and raised her as his own daughter. Just before he died, Yu Zhang changed the sleeping Xiao Yu back into the special lotus and gave it to Bai Long. He told Bai Long to give the lotus to San Zhang. Then San Zhang could take it to where it was supposed to be in the West. This would stop something really bad from happening that could shake up the whole universe. Yu Zhang also gave Bai Long his dragon spirit to keep him safe. After everything was done, Yu Zhang died. He left behind the dragon spirit and the truth about the lotus. But right after he died, a god attacked Bai Long. Bai Long tried to use the dragon spirit's power to protect himself, but it was hard to control and use all its strength. The god got the special lotus and ran away, but Bai Long went after him. Finally, they both ended up where the Ashura demon clan lived, led by the demon king Rahu. This clan really hated gods, so when they saw one coming, Rahu told his demon warriors to get rid of them. Bai Long was really scared because these demons were so brutal and mean. But something surprising happened. Rahu didn't hurt Bai Long. He let him live after hearing about the mission to take the lotus back to where it should be in the west. Rabu had his own reasons for helping Bai Long. He didn't want the Jade Emperor to get the power of the special lotus. But Sha Xin knew where the lotus was and he sent one of the strongest heavenly soldiers to get it from Bai Long. The next day, Bai Long started a journey to find San Zhang and give him the special lotus. Tudi told him, San Zhang was in Chang'an. 
a big city that would take 10 days to reach by walking. It was a hard trip, but Bai Long kept going because he really wanted to find Sanzang and finish his job. After a long time, Bai Long got to Chang'an. The city was really busy, but Bai Long only cared about finding Sanzang. He looked everywhere, asking people if they had seen the monk. And then one day, he got lucky. Finally, Bai Long found Sanzang. The monk looked tired and down. He couldn't forget about what happened in the Heavenly Kingdom years ago. Bai Long went to Sanzang and told him who he was. He explained why he came to the West and what he needed to do with the Lotus. But instead of being happy, Sanzang got upset when he heard this. Bai Long's words made Sanzang think about the bad things that happened before, like when Sun Wukong died. Remembering this hurt Sanzang a lot. He blamed himself because he didn't listen to Sun Wukong's warning, and that's why Sun Wukong died. This made Sanzang feel really bad, and he didn't know what to do anymore. Trouble showed up not long after. Jin, a strong guy from the Heavenly Elite Force, came with his warrior girls. Jin told his warriors to attack Bai Long suddenly, and Bai Long was surprised and didn't expect it. But even though he didn't know how to fight, Bai Long wasn't scared to try. He found his inner power, the dragon spirit, and fought back against the warrior girls. Jin was really surprised that his warriors lost to Bai Long, so he jumped in and fought Bai Long himself. He was super strong and attacked Bai Long a lot. Even though Bai Long tried really hard to protect himself and the special lotus that Yuzhan gave him, Jin was just too strong. With one hit, Jin took down Bai Long. Bai Long was on the ground, hurt really bad and unable to fight back. Even though Bai Long asked for help, Sanzang decided to leave instead. After leaving Bai Long behind, Sanzang met a spirit that looked like Xiaoyu. The spirit asked Sanzang not to give the lotus to the Jade Emperor, reminding him about the warning Sun Wukong got before he died. Hearing this made Sanzang really sad because he felt bad for not listening to Sun Wukong's warning. Now Sanzang understood better and felt really bad. He knew he couldn't ignore Bai Long and the Lotus mission. He saw this as a chance to fix his mistakes and make things right. So Sanzang decided to team up with Bai Long and help him on the journey to the West. Bai Long and Jin were in a tough fight, and it seemed like Bai Long was going to lose. Jin was really strong and he was ready to use his strongest move to finish Bai Long off. But just when things looked bad, Sanzang showed up to help Bai Long. Even though Sanzang didn't like fighting and wanted to avoid trouble with the gods, he knew he had to step in. He faced Jin and started fighting him too. As they battled, Bai Long remembered his past, how he was saved by Xiao Yu and her family. He thought about the love and friendship he had with King Tian Yu and Yu Zhang, the dragon warriors. The idea of losing his family to the gods made Bai Long really mad and he used all his strength to fight Jin. He was determined to beat him. After Jin was defeated, Bai Long took a breather. He was really tired from the fight, but he felt proud of what they had done. Sanzang led him to a temple where they had kept things from their journey to the west 16 years ago. Inside the temple, Bai Long looked around and saw reminders of the journey that happened so long ago. He was amazed when he thought about all the challenges that Sanzang and Sun Wukong faced back then. Sanzang then talked to Bai Long and told him that they needed to gather stuff for their new journey to return the sacred lotus where it belonged. Sanzang had gathered equipment and weapons, but there was something else in the temple, Ao Shui, the third dragon prince of the Eastern Sea Kingdom. Ao Shui had been with Sanzang and his group on their journey to the west. He played a big role by being Sanzang's white horse. In the past, Ao Shui had been quite troublesome, and it caused harm to humans. Sha Xin, the god, had punished Ao Shui by turning him into a horse to accompany Sanzang on his journey. Sanzang hoped Ao Shui would change during their trip, but instead, the horse's behavior got worse. Sanzang used a special technique to control Ao Shui's power and kept him locked in the temple. But later, Sanzang decided to let Bai Long free Ao Shui because he saw potential in him. Even though Ao Shui had been captive for a long time, he didn't feel sorry for what he had done. When Bai Long freed him, he attacked Bai Long right away. But Sanzang was ready for this. He had used a technique that not only weakened Ao Shui's powers but also stopped him from turning back into a horse. Sanzang threatened to change Ao Shui back into a horse if he didn't help them on their journey to return the Sacred Lotus. As they continued their journey, they faced more challenges. Heavenly soldiers came to Chang'an City because they heard that Sanzang had defeated one of their own. These celestial warriors were surprised by how Sanzang wasn't following the Jade Emperor's orders and the rules of heaven. The next day, Sanzang and Bai Long found a diner in a dry and lonely area. They decided to rest from their journey. But something felt strange to Sanzang. Instead of eating the meat bread offered by the owner, he ordered tea and fruit. Suddenly, the truth came out, the owner and the other customers turned out to be monsters. They attacked Sanzang and Bai Long. 
Aoshui was watching from far away. When he saw his friends in trouble, he jumped in to help. He fought against the monsters bravely and managed to defeat them after a tough battle. While they were trapped underground, Sanzang met a young boy named Jun. He was being threatened by a demon. Sanzang rescued the boy and told him to run away. But Jun decided to stay with Sanzang because he felt the strong power of goodness around him. Sanzang tried to find out more about the demon who had captured them. A long time ago, there was a village where a woman gave birth to a baby boy who looked different. The villagers thought the baby was a demon and treated the family badly. They even burned their house down and the woman's husband died in the fire. This made the woman very angry and full of hate. She turned into a terrible demon that liked to eat people. In the present time, Bai Long met this demon woman and her son, who had also become demons that ate people. The sad story of the woman's past had turned her and her son into these terrifying creatures. They were causing a lot of fear by hunting humans to eat. When the demoness saw Bai Long, she told her son to catch him for their next meal. But Bai Long sensed the danger and fought back bravely. He defeated the son and put an end to his terror by defeating him. After the demoness son was defeated, she got really angry and attacked Bai Long. But right then, Sanzang and Ao Shui arrived to help Bai Long fight against the demoness. They all worked together to finally defeat her. When the battle was over, Sanzang said a prayer for the demoness, hoping that her heart would find peace and that she could be reborn as a human and have a happy life next time. With the demoness gone, they realized that Jun was missing. They started looking for him. But then the strong soldiers from heaven came and attacked Sanzang and his group. Bai Long had to fight one of these strong soldiers, even though he was not as strong. He got hurt during the fight, but he didn't give up. He used all his strength and used one of his powerful moves. And just like that, the battle changed and Bai Long won. While Bai Long was busy fighting, Sanzang found himself in a tough battle against other strong soldiers from heaven. Despite trying his best, Sanzang got overwhelmed and couldn't move anymore because the soldiers knew his moves too well. Ho Shui was watching all this and had to make a hard choice. He thought about killing Sanzang to break the spell, but his anger towards the gods was even stronger. So he decided to help Sanzang instead. He said he wanted to get back at the gods more than hurting Sanzang. With this new determination, Ao Shui fought against one of the tough soldiers from heaven. He used his dragon spirit's power and he won. San Zhao and his disciples felt relieved, thinking they had won the battle. But that feeling didn't last long because suddenly the god Sha Xin appeared. He caught Ao Shui off guard and made him unable to move. Then Sha Xin put San Zhao into an illusion pond that trapped him. Bai Long saw all this and tried to save San Zhao, but Sha Xin was quick and tied Bai Long to a big fire pillar. Just when Sha Xin was about to take the sacred lotus, Sanzang appeared and stopped him. Sanzang bravely told Sha Xin that the illusion pond wouldn't trap him, since he had faced much tougher challenges on his journey. With confidence, Sanzang said he was no longer scared and would protect his disciples from the gods. Then he challenged Sha Xin to a fight. Right before the battle started, Sha Xin saw that Bai Lan had broken free from the fire pillar. Juven, who was actually Ru Lai in disguise, had helped Bai Lan get out of there. Surprisingly, Jun revealed himself as Rulei, a powerful god. He had the power to release Bai Long from the fire pillar's chains. As another god, Rulei challenged Sha Xin to a fight and said he was there to help Sanzang return the sacred lotus to its right place in the west. He explained that he had taken the lotus from the Jade Emperor and given it to King Tian Yu. At that moment, Sha Xin agreed to Rulei's challenge because Rulei assured him that he wouldn't interfere with Sanzang's mission. Sha Xin used one of his most powerful moves to attack Ru Lei, but Ru Lei countered the attack and eventually won. Sha Xin was so focused on his attack that he didn't notice Ru Lei's ability to break through his defense. As promised, Sha Xin returned to his palace with the elite soldiers from heaven. Before leaving, he told Ru Lei and Sanzang that their success this time was just luck. As they were about to continue their journey, Ru Lei explained that he was too weak to help them right now. He needed to meditate and regain his strength. Ru Lai then gave his bead necklace to Sanzang, saying it would always connect them before disappearing from their view. As they continued their journey, Sanzang shared stories with Bai Long about his past disciples. Even though they had successfully finished their task, Sanzang was sad that he had lost contact with them and couldn't reach them anymore. As they approached the territory of the pig demon clan, Sanzang thought about one of his former disciples, Zhu Bajie. He wanted to find Zhu Bajie and convince him to join their mission to the west. Meanwhile, the king of Ashura Rahu gathered the demon kings for a meeting. They talked about Sanzao and his quest to take the sacred lotus to the west. Rahu told the demon kings that Sanzao and his group would soon travel through the dangerous demon's path. Rahu and the demon kings despised the gods and saw this as a chance to attack. 
They were eager to defeat their eternal enemies and establish their control of the world. Sanzang and his disciples finally reached the land of the pig demon clan. Sanzang had told Bai Long about Zhu Bajie, one of his former disciples. Sanzang said that Zhu Bajie might be leading the pig demons now, since he used to be next in line for the leadership. But when they found Zhu Bajie, something surprising happened. The demons he was supposed to be ruling were actually tormenting and bullying him. Seeing his old master, Zhu Bajie felt a mix of emotions, shame, and embarrassment. He didn't think he deserved his master's attention and quickly tried to run away. Eventually, Sanzai reached Zhu Bajie's place, which was quite different from what he expected. He had always thought Zhu Bajie would become the leader of the pig demon clan. However, Zhu Bajie shared a story of shame and dishonor instead. Sixteen years ago, Zhu Bajie had stood up for Sun Wukong against a god named Sha Xin. Sadly, during the fight, Sha Xin broke Zhu Bajie's important fangs. These fangs were a big deal for the pig demons, a sign of their pride and strength. Without them, Zhu Bajie lost his standing and was kicked out by his own people. After that important day, Zhu Bajie went from feeling confident to feeling broken. He wandered around his own village with no real purpose. At the same time, his younger brother Yang Li saw this as a chance to take control of the pig demon clan. Yang Li also grabbed Zhu Bajie's weapon for himself. And to make things even worse, he held Zhu Bajie's wife captive. When Zhu Bajie told his story to San Zhang, it made San Zhang really determined to help. He wanted to help his old disciples regain his self-respect. San Zhang told Zhu Bajie to stand up against Yang Li and fight. The goal was to rescue both his wife and his weapon. That night, San Zhang came up with a plan to attack Yang Li's place and get back what belonged to Zhu Bajie. When they got to the stronghold, they were met by tough resistance from Yang Li's skilled bodyguards. A big fight happened. San Zhang and his disciples used all their skills to fight the tough bodyguards. But even though they tried their best, things turned bad for them. The pig demons who were supporting Yang Li started attacking them too. The situation got worse when they faced Yang Li himself. He had gotten hold of Zhu Bajie's powerful old weapon. With this weapon, Yang Li easily beat San Zhang and even stopped Ao Shui's strong dragon spirit attack. Feeling defeated and surrounded, Zhu Bajie stepped forward and asked for his wife to be let go. To everyone's surprise, Zhu Bajie did something unexpected. He secretly worked out a deal with Yang Li. Zhu Bajie gave Yang Li the sacred lotus in exchange for his wife's freedom. This shocked and disappointed San Zhang and the others because they had trusted Zhu Bajie on their journey. Zhu Bajie was desperate to save their lives, so he begged Yang Li to let them go after getting the lotus. But Yang Li had different plans. He wanted more power, so he refused to release them. He even wanted to kill San Zhang. Without wasting time, Yang Li rushed at San Zhang and attacked him. But San Zhang fought back and used the chance to scold Zhu Bajie. San Zhang wasn't upset about the betrayal itself, but he was disappointed that Zhu Bajie had lost his confidence and gave up after losing his fangs. This scolding made Zhu Bajie drop his guard and Yang Li took advantage of this to defeat him. Yang Li was about to attack San Zhang, but something changed in Zhu Bajie. He realized his mistake because of what San Zhang said. He hurried to stop Yang Li before it was too late. With strong determination, Zhu Bajie got into a tough fight with Yang Li. He managed to beat Yang Li and take away his weapon. In that moment, Zhu Bajie realized that he had been underestimating himself all this time, which was why his fangs hadn't grown back. San Zhang's encouragement and guidance had a big impact on him. He got his confidence back and turned into his real self again, proud of his fangs. Feeling more powerful and confident, Zhu Bajie challenged Yang Li to a one-on-one -on -one fight. He easily defeated Yang Li with his newfound strength. He was really mad and was about to end Yang Li's life in his anger. But then, his wife showed up out of nowhere. Seeing her made Zhu Bajie stop the fight. He was so happy to see her that he hugged her tightly. But this happiness didn't last long. Zhu Bajie soon figured out that his wife, Lian, had been planning something bad. She had been secretly with Yang Li right from the start. She felt ashamed of Zhu Bajie because the pig demon clan thought he was a failure. This made him really angry and hurt. He wanted to hurt her back, maybe even kill her. But he loved her too much to do that. So in the end, he chose to walk away and forget about the past. He couldn't bring himself to harm the woman he loved. The next day, Zhu Bajie had a talk with San Zhang that finally convinced him to go on a journey to the west to get back the sacred lotus. Before they left, San Zhang had a meeting with Yang Lie and Lian. He told them he forgave Lian and wanted her to be happy with Yang Lie. Then Zhu Bajie asked to hug Lian one last time. She agreed, but he acted in a way that upset her. She got mad and made him leave. He quickly caught up with San Zhang and the others, who were waiting for him. At the same time, the Jade Emperor found out that Rulei was still alive, 
and he wasn't happy about it. The story then went back to the past when Rulei had captured the Jade Emperor. The Jade Emperor wanted to use the Sacred Lotus for bad things. Rulei knew this would be dangerous and wanted to stop him. They had a big fight because Rulei wanted to protect everyone. Rulei realized he couldn't beat the Jade Emperor, but he was determined to save the universe. He fought hard to take the Sacred Lotus from the Jade Emperor, even though he got hurt a lot. In the present, the Jade Emperor learned that Rulei was still around. He quickly made a plan to get rid of Rulei and get the Sacred Lotus, which he had wanted for 16 years. When they got to a hill, Sanzai and his friends decided to camp there for the night. They planned to continue their journey in the morning. Sanzai and Bai Long took turns to watch during the night. Sanzai used this time to teach Bai Long some things. They wanted to help Bai Long improve his fighting skills against fast and strong enemies. While they were training, Ao Shui, who hadn't slept, came up to Bai Long with a question. He wanted to know about Bai Long's dragon spirit because it was different from the usual dragon clans. Bai Long explained that he got his dragon spirit from Yu Zhang, who was the heir of King Tian Yu. When Bai Long mentioned Yu Zhang's name, Ao Shui seemed surprised. Bai Long figured out that Ao Shui knew about Yu Zhang. But even though Bai Long asked, Ao Shui didn't want to say more. He just turned away looking like he was thinking. Ao Shui was left wondering if Yu Zhang had really died after losing his dragon spirit. Up in the Heavenly Kingdom, there was an important talk going on between a god named Shun Tian and San Zhang's old disciples, Shou Wujing. Sixteen years ago, during a fight between Sun Wukong and Erlong, Sha Xin hurt San Zhang and his disciples, including Shou Wujing. Because of that, Shou Wujing forgot who he was. His memory got wiped out. Shun Tian felt sorry for him and decided to become his teacher. Sha Xin told Shun Tian to get the Sacred Lotus and give it to the Jade Emperor. So Shu and Tian told Shou Wujing to take the lotus back from San Zhang and his group. The next day, San Zhang and his disciples reached a big desert. They were tired and really thirsty. San Zhang decided they should rest, and he asked Ao Shui to find some water nearby. San Zhang thought Ao Shui's sharp nose would make him perfect for the job. But even after looking for a long time, Ao Shui couldn't find any water. He started to feel that something was wrong in the area. San Zhang and his group realized there was a problem. They decided to split up and look for the person who was using tricky illusions to trap them in the desert. Shu Bujun was already there, watching them secretly from High Rock. He was planning to attack them. The illusions made by Shu Bujun weren't just meant to trick them. They could also bring out the bad thoughts hidden inside them, making them act mean. The group faced a big challenge, but they were determined to find the truth and stop the illusions from taking over. Because of the illusions effect, Ao Shui got into a fight with Zhu Bajie. At the same time, San Zhang tried to take the Sacred Lotus from Bai Long, thinking he could use its power. But when San Zhang touched Bai Long's necklace, the illusion's hold on him broke. San Zhang realized that Bai Long was the key to stopping the illusions, so Shu Wujing changed his plan. He attacked Bai Long physically, wanting to get the Sacred Lotus. Even though Bai Long was outnumbered, he didn't give up. He fought hard against Shu Wujing, who could turn into sand. But Shu Wujing was stronger and Bai Long couldn't handle him. He ended up in a tough spot against Shou Wujing's powerful sand attack. Even though things were really bad, Bai Long didn't want to give up. He used all of his dragon spirit power to beat Shou Wujing. He had a lot of determination and dragon spirit strength, so he managed to defeat Shou Wujing. Shou Wujing's body got destroyed and only his mask was left. San Zhang sealed it away. When Shou Wujing was beaten, Zhu Bajie and Ao Shui got free from the illusions and woke up. San Zhang tried to help Shou Wujing remember his lost memories. San Zhang told Bai Long and the others to stay careful because more troubles might come. The journey wasn't done yet, and they knew they'd face more problems. Soon after Shu and Tan came there, he told his three strong fighters to attack San Zhang and his group and take the Sacred Lotus. San Zhang and his disciples got ready to fight and protect themselves. But something surprising happened. Bai Long and the others beat Shu and Tian's strong fighters easily. So Shu and Tian decided to fight himself. He turned into a big war god, getting super strong and fast. Even though Bai Long and the others tried really hard, they couldn't match Shu and Tian's new power. While all of this was happening, San Zhang was working really hard to bring Shu Wujing back to life and help him remember who he was. At the same time, Shu Wujing, who was stuck in his own mind, suddenly heard a voice calling him. He followed the voice to find out where it was coming from. With Bai Long and the others defeated, Shu and Tian turned to San Zhang. He attacked San Zhang strongly, and because of that, the plan to bring back Shu Wujing failed. Something shocking happened then, Shou Wujing turned into this sand demon again controlled by Shu and Tian. He was really angry and attacked San Zhang, stabbing him the heart with his sword. 
Shu and Tian thought he had won, but things weren't as they seemed. Sanzai had managed to bring Shu Wujing back and help him remember just in time. They had worked together to trick Shu and Tian. Shu Wujing fought really hard against Shu and Tian, using all his strength to try to beat his former master. Even though they were in the desert, Shu Wujing wasn't doing well. Shu and Tian found where Shu Wujing's real body was and hit him really hard. It hurt Shu Wujing badly, and he couldn't move. But actually, Shu Wujing didn't plan to beat Shu and Tian because he knew he was much stronger. Shu Wujing's real plan was to keep Shu and Tian busy. This way, Sanzang and the others could capture Heaven's strong fighters. Sanzang talked to Shu and Tian and said if he let them go, they wouldn't hurt the strong fighters. Shu and Tian agreed because he cared about his fighters. After the tough fight, Shu and Tian asked Shu Wujing to be his student again. But Shu Wujing thanked him and said no. He felt close to Sanzang and wanted to stay with him. Shu Wujing quickly caught up with Sanzang and the others. He told them that Sun Wukong's spirit was trapped in the South China Sea. He believed they could help bring him back to life. When Sanzang and his students heard this, they decided to go to the South China Sea and free Sun Wukong's spirit. That they would keep going on their journey to the west. After a long and tough journey, Sanzang and his disciples finally got to the coast of the South China Sea. There were big pillars there. These pillars were used to keep Sun Wukong's power down so he couldn't get free. Even though his body was gone, Sun Wukong's spirit was super strong. The gods worked really hard to make sure he stayed controlled. Sanzai and his disciples talked about who should go underwater to set Sun Wukong's spirit free. Sanzang, Shu Wujing, and Zhu Bajie said they didn't know how to swim or dive. But Bai Long said he could do it. He was good at swimming and diving. Ao Shui was even better at these things, especially in the water. But he said Ao Shui should do it. But Ao Shui said no to the job. Sanzang and the others tried to change his mind. Right then, King Nan Hai and his three sons showed up. They were in charge of the driving clans in the South China Sea. They wanted to stop Sanzang and his group. Ao Shui seemed like he didn't want to talk to these dragons. He had some bad history with them before. Once upon a time, Yang Ao Shui had a really tough time because of King Nan Hai's oldest son, Yi Long. Even though time passed, Yi Long still liked making fun of Ao Shui and calling him mean names like Loser and Sanzang's pet. But Ao Shui got really fed up. He was so angry and wanted things to be fair. So he got really strong and faced Yi Long. But just before they could fight, Sanzang came in and gave Ao Shui a new job. He had to go into the deep sea and free Sun Wukong's spirit. Ao Shui put his anger aside and focused on his new mission. Sanzang fought against Yi Long and Bai Long jumped into the water to help Ao Shui. Just when Ao Shui was about to start his mission, King Nan Hai came up to him. The king was really mad at Ao Shui and attacked him, saying he was ashamed to the dragon clan. Sanzang saw what was happening and acted fast. He got away from King Nan Hai and dived into the sea. King Nan Hai's daughter, Ao Ling, followed him. Bai Long was already where Sun Wukong's spirit was trapped. He was fighting against strong dragon fighters. Even though there were more of them, Bai Long fought hard. Then Ao Shui came to help. They worked together to beat the dragon fighters and find Sun Wukong's spirit. Instead of getting back at Ao Shui and Bai Long, Ao Ling decided not to seek revenge. Ao Shui knew Ao Ling was there, and he told her he didn't have any bad feelings towards her. They were friends when they were kids. Meanwhile, King Nan Hai kept attacking Sanzang, and he was having a hard time defending himself. Finally, the strong attacks made Sanzang fall into the sea. Seeing this, Shu Wujin quickly acted. He cut down trees and threw logs into the water to help Sanzang stay afloat because Sanzang couldn't swim. At the same time, King Nan Hai told everyone that the pillars were there to weaken Sun Wukong's spirit and stop him from coming back to life. When Sanzang heard this, he got really angry and felt guilty. He realized that not believing Sun Wukong's warnings caused him to be punished by the gods. So Sanzang decided to make things right. He wanted to take the sacred lotus back to the west, where it belonged. He wanted to stop bad things from happening, just like Sun Wukong wanted. Sanzang got really determined and fought against King Nan Hai. He worked really hard and finally matched King Nan Hai's strength. The big fight kept going and Sanzang kept fighting hard even when King Nan Hai used his strongest attack. King Nan Hai had to change into his real form and use all his power because Sanzang was getting closer. At the same time, Zhu Bajie was fighting really hard against King Nan Hai's second son, Yi Jin. While this was happening, Ao Shui was underwater breaking the pillars one by one. Bai Long didn't know what to do because he couldn't help Ao Shui destroy the pillars. Ao Shui told him to focus and use his dragon spirit power, just like Sanzang taught him. So Bai Long used his dragon spirit power and joined Ao Shui in breaking the pillars. 
Bai Long thought about Yu Zhang, Ao Shui's friend, as they broke the pillars. They kept going and finally Bai Long met Sun Wukong's spirit. Bai Long told him he was San Zong's disciple, and they wanted to take the scriptures back to the west. Sun Wukong told Bai Long that there was a pillar with a sword that was stopping his power. He told Bai Long to find the sword. Suddenly, Yi Long appeared and hurt Ao Shui. Bai Long saw this and went to help Ao Shui. But Ao Shui was really determined to finish his mission. He told Bai Long to find the sword while he fought Yi Long. Around the same time, Ao Ling showed up. She was different from her brother and asked why they always did what the gods said about thinking. Yi Long then told everyone his real plan. He wanted to take over the dragon kingdoms and make them follow King Nan Hai's rule with the help of the heavenly soldiers. He thought that if all the dragon clans followed his dad, things would get better. While Yi Long was talking, he said that King Nan Hai told the Jade Emperor about the hidden scripture that belonged to King Tian Yu. Meanwhile, San Zhang was fighting King Nan Hai on the sea's surface. Suddenly, Erlong and the heavenly soldiers came up to San Zhang. Erlong gave San Zhang two options, give up the scripture or get ready to fight against Erlong and his soldiers. But San Zhang made a brave choice. He decided to go on a dangerous journey to the west and take the scripture back where it belonged. Even though he was scared and unsure at first, he wanted to fix his mistakes and show how determined he was. Faced with resistance from Erlong, a formidable warrior, San Zhang stood his ground and challenged him to a fight, determined to prove the strength of his conviction. But Erlong was not one to back down. With lightning speed, he lunged forward, brandishing his spear towards San Zhang. Just as Erlong was about to attack again, Xiu Wujing jumped in and stopped the attack. This gave San Zhang a chance to fight back. San Zhang used his strong move and Zhu Baji attacked from behind with his best weapon. Their combined attack pushed Erlong back for a moment. At the same time, Yi Long was fighting hard against Ao Shui. He tried to mess with Ao Shui's mind by bringing up their past at the academy. In the past, Ao Shui was the weakest student in the academy and Yi Long and his friends used to bully him. But one day, a new student named Yu Zhang came to help Ao Shui. Yu Zhang was different from Yi Long. He was humble and quietly confident, even though he was really skilled. Yu Zhang was the one who became Ao Shui's first real friend. He taught Ao Shui how to fly and master different fighting skills. Every day, Yu Zhang would encourage Ao Shui and believe in his potential. He saw something special in Ao Shui and thought that one day he would become a great warrior that all the dragon clans would be proud of. When Yu Long's teasing reminded Ao Shui of those days, it lit a fire in him. He was determined to prove that he could win any fight. Gathering the power of the red lightning, his strongest ability, Ao Shui unleashed it in a powerful explosion that froze Yi Long in place. Fueled by newfound strength and a desire for revenge, Ao Shui insulted Yi Long and was ready to make him pay by blinding one of his eyes. But before Ao Shui could act, his older brother Yun Tao arrived. Yun Tao stepped in and prevented Ao Shui from carrying out his plan to kill Yi Long. Meanwhile, Zhu Bajie continued his battle against the heavenly soldiers and easily defeated most of them. However, his victory was short-lived when Yi Jin appeared, posing a new challenge. After a fierce fight, Zhu Baji emerged as the winner, defeating Yi Jin. At the same time, San Zhang was having a tough time battling Erlong, who was the top god of war. Even though he knew he was no match for Erlong, San Zhang didn't want to give up. Each of Erlong's attacks shook San Zhang's body due to the immense power, but he kept on fighting, determined to block every strike. Despite being pushed to his limits, San Zhang's spirit remained unyielding. Meanwhile, Bai Long finally discovered the hidden sword and tried to free Sun Wukong's spirit. With all his strength, Bai Long managed to pull out the sword, setting Sun Wukong free from his prison. However, since Sun Wukong didn't have a physical form, he entered Bai Long's body, ready to assist San Zhang and the others in their battles. With the arrival of the legendary Monkey King, the tide of the battle began to shift in favor of San Zhang and his disciples. As San Zhang neared his breaking point, Erlong saw a chance to deliver a fatal blow. But before he could, Sun Wukong emerged in his true form and launched a powerful attack on Erlong to protect his master. This attack threw Erlong off balance, allowing Sun Wukong to approach San Zhang and the others. Zhu Bajie and Shi Wujing were thrilled to be reunited with their companion, now residing within Bai Long's body. Even though San Zhang apologized, Sun Wukong still held on to his anger because San Zhang didn't trust him back then, which had led to the chaos they were facing now. Yet Sun Wukong put his anger aside, realizing that Erlong was regaining his strength. He told San Zhang and the others to step back and let him handle the fight against Erlong. The battle carried on, and Sun Wukong summoned his troop of apes to face Erlong, the mighty god. However, 
Erlong effortlessly wiped out the apes, revealing that they were just a trick played by the clever Monkey King. The real fight began with Sun Wukong using one of his most powerful moves, a devastating attack. But Erlong wasn't outmatched. He skillfully deflected the attack and launched a counter-strike with equal strength. And so the intense clash between these two immortal beings continued. On the flip side, King Nan Hai was deeply shocked as he watched his second son's death unfold before his eyes. The news that his other son, Yi Long, had suffered severe injuries in a fight against Ao Shue, even losing an eye, only added to the king's distress. Amidst all this, Yu Tao arrived with the unconscious Ao Shue, requesting San Zhang's permission to take him back to their village. Recognizing that Ao Shue needed to settle things with his clan, San Zhang agreed and allowed Yu Tao to bring him home. Approaching Yu Tao, King Nan Hai sought retribution for his son. Yet, Yu Tao turned the tables, confronting the king and exposing that his clan had no knowledge of Sun Wukong's spirit being sealed in the South China Sea. He declared his intention to inform the other dragon kingdoms and investigate King Nan Hai's role. With Ao Shui and Tao, Yu Tao departed while San Zheng and his disciples took a break to rest and recover, waiting to learn the outcome of Sun Wukong's battle against Erlong. During the ongoing battle, Sun Wukong found himself struggling against Erlong's relentless attacks. Erlong was truly a formidable god of war, unmatched in combat strength. Sun Wukong, confined within Bai Long's body, faced limitations. Yet the clever Monkey King didn't back down. He employed his cunning to launch a tricky attack, trying to catch Erlong off guard. However, Erlong wasn't easily deceived. He brushed off the attempt, mocking the idea that such a simple trick could work on him. Undaunted, Sun Wukong broke free from the confines of Bai Long, revealing his true form as a giant ape. He unleashed a barrage of powerful strikes. Despite the fierceness of Sun Wukong's assault, Erlong stood strong. Fueled by anger, Erlong unleashed his full might, striking Sun Wukong with his fire spear and penetrating even the formidable defenses of the giant ape. Ultimately, it was Erlong who emerged as the winner, triumphing over Sun Wukong in an epic battle that would be remembered for ages. The battle's outcome was not what it appeared to be. The giant ape Erlong defeated turned out to be a mere illusion created by Sun Wukong. While Erlong was focused on the fake ape, the real Sun Wukong slipped away unnoticed. When Erlong realized he had been tricked, he was furious. Adding to his frustration, he soon discovered that San Zheng and his disciples were also illusions. The actual group had fled before the confrontation with Erlong began. Sun Wukong had effectively outwitted the god of war. Sun Wukong and his companions had a well-devised escape plan, a pre-arranged signal for when they faced an unbeatable situation. Soon, Sun Wukong caught up with San Zhang and the others, reveling in his success at outsmarting Erlong. He couldn't help but chuckle at the idea of a mighty god being outfoxed by a demon like him. Yet the victory was tinged with sadness. Sun Wukong had depleted his spiritual energy and had to depart from Bai Long's body. He disclosed that he was headed to the underworld for rebirth. Before parting ways, Sun Wukong assured them that he would reunite with them after his rebirth. With Sun Wukong gone, San Zhang's conviction deepened that his chosen path was one of righteousness and justice. He discarded Sun Wukong's gold headband, a symbol of his suppressed power, allowing the monkey king to regain his full strength in his next life. Bai Long woke up abruptly, shaking off the remnants of his dream about Xiao Yu. As he rubbed the sleep from his eyes, he sensed something was amiss. The glow of the sacred lotus had vanished. His heart raced as he approached the plant and what he saw next left him stunned. The sacred lotus had transformed into Xiao Yu. Filled with newfound determination, Bai Long embarked on a mission to free Sun Wukong's spirit. After succeeding, he joined San Zhang and his companions on their journey. Their path was fraught with challenges, but none were as daunting as the showdown against the Dragon King and his army of undead. The battlefield resembled a scene from the depths of hell, with the Dragon King wielding overwhelming power that threatened to overpower San Zhang and his disciples. Initially, San Zhang and his disciples seemed to have the upper hand against the undead forces. However, the arrival of the Dragon King turned the tables. With his immense strength, he swiftly shifted the balance, overwhelming San Zhang and his disciples and seemingly defeating them all, except for a devastated Xiao Yu. Yet, it was all a nightmare for Xiao Yu. In reality, San Zhang and his disciples were safe and alive, continuing their journey to the west with the addition of their new member, Xiao Yu. The unsettling feeling from her dream lingered with Xiao Yu. She feared it might be a glimpse of the future and grew concerned for San Zhang and his group's safety. Despite their objections, she eventually made the tough choice to carry on alone, hoping to shield them from potential harm. As they moved through the thick forest, Bai Long led the way for the group. But after three days of trekking, they found themselves no closer to an exit. 
Growing increasingly anxious, Zubajie worried that they might have strayed onto a path often used by demons to deceive travelers. In contrast, Sanzang proposed a short break to rest and gather their thoughts. During your pause, Shouyu used her magic to create a feast of delectable dishes, lifting everyone's spirits and providing them with the energy to continue. While they enjoyed the meal, Sanzang pondered the Jade Emperor's motives for seeking the Sacred Lotus. Xiaoyu shed light on the Sacred Lotus's true importance, explaining that it played a vital role in maintaining balance between light and darkness. She elaborated that removing the Sacred Lotus from its original location had disrupted this equilibrium, resulting in a rise of negativity and hatred among humans. The situation would only worsen if the Sacred Lotus wasn't promptly returned to its rightful place. Zubaji's excitement was contagious as he grasped the explanation. Filled with renewed resolve, he confidently declared their mission to return the Sacred Lotus to its original place in the West. Yet everyone was taken aback when Shoyu unexpectedly revealed her plan. She announced that she would continue her journey to the West alone without the company of Sanzang and his disciples. She wanted to ensure their safety and felt it was better for her to go solo. At first, Bai Long was unsure about letting Xiaoyu venture alone and even contemplated chasing after her. But Sanzang intervened, reminding Bai Long that they needed to honor Xiaoyu's choice and allow her to pursue her journey in her own way. In the Heavenly Kingdom, the Jade Emperor was really mad upon learning that his soldiers had failed to get the Sacred Lotus from Sanzang and his disciples. Even Erlong, the strongest god, couldn't do it. Sha Xin, though, found the Jade Emperor's reaction a bit too much. He didn't know that Sun Wukong's spirit was trapped in the South China Sea. So he asked the Jade Emperor about the situation. The Jade Emperor, however, didn't want to explain. He said he didn't have to tell everyone everything. He told Sha Xin to gather the best soldiers from all over the Heavenly Kingdom to get the Sacred Lotus from Sanzang and his team. As Sha Xin left the palace, he had a feeling something was wrong. He remembered what Rule had said about the Jade Emperor losing his way. The scene shifts to the past, showing Sha Xin practicing fighting with Rulei. They were really skilled and everyone, including the Jade Emperor and other gods, was impressed. The Jade Emperor was happy to have such strong allies and he praised them for their power. Back in the present, Sha Xin had some doubts about the Jade Emperor's strange actions. Still, he stayed loyal and did what the Emperor told him. He got the best heavenly soldiers ready to go and sent them to the Demon's Path. Their job was to provoke the demons and team up to take the Sacred Lotus from Sanzan and his disciples. In a foggy forest, Xiao Yu was walking all by herself. Out of nowhere, a crow showed up and its creepy caw gave Xiao Yu the chills. She went closer to the crow and tried giving it some food. But just as she was reaching out her hand, a bunch of crows swooped down from above and circled around her. Scared, Xiao Yu tried to run away from the birds, but she tripped and fell down. The crows were coming closer, getting ready to attack. Just at the right moment, Bai Long showed up and scared off the scary crows, saving Xiao Yu from danger. Right after, Sanzang and his disciples came out from hiding, revealing that they had been secretly following Xiao Yu ever since they split up. Sanzang and the others had a good laugh about Xiao Yu's innocent mistake of feeding the meat eating crows, which made her feel a bit underestimated. Irritated by their laughter, she told them why she decided to continue her journey to the West on her own. Xiao Yu shared a nightmare she had a while ago where she saw Bai Long, Sanzang, and his disciples dying. She believed the nightmare was a prediction and that being with them would make it come true. So, to avoid that fate, she chose to go solo. But Sanzang reassured Xiao Yu, saying that death was something all living things must face, no matter how much they try to avoid it. He told her not to stress about fate and welcomed her to keep journeying with them to the West. After thinking it over, Xiao Yu realized she had misunderstood her nightmare and chose to continue the journey with Sanzang and the others. While they were on their way, Zhu Baji asked Sanzang about Sun Wukong and Ao Shui's whereabouts. Sanzang believed Sun Wukong had wisely gone to the underworld, while Ao Shui might be dealing with his past actions in the East Sea Dragon Kingdom. The scene changed to show Ao Shui undergoing a trial in his hometown, the Dragon Kingdom. In the courtroom, Oshui was in chains and appeared to be facing tough treatment from the dragon warriors due to his stubborn resistance. The trial was led by King Dong Hai, who was also Oshui's father. King Dong Hai seemed quite frustrated with his son for bringing shame to the family through his rebellious actions. To everyone's surprise, King Dong Hai was the same dragon king from Xiao Yu's nightmare where he defeated Sanzang and his disciples. During the trial, King Nan Hai insisted on Oshui's execution arguing that he had disgraced the dragon clan by collaborating with Sanzang and his disciples. King Nanhai also held Ao Shui accountable for Yi Long's eye injury. Supporters of King Nanhai cheered, supporting the idea of Ao Shui facing consequences for his deeds. 
The pressure on Eo Shui grew as he stood before the court, facing the possibility of a severe punishment. However, Eo Shui didn't give in easily. He stood up for himself by revealing a secret plan of King Nan Hai's. He accused King Nan Hai of colluding with the gods to seal Sun Wukong's spirit at the bottom of the South China Sea, an area under his control. This plan, Eo Shui claimed, was meant to help King Nan Hai gain power by overthrowing the other dragon kings. Yun Tao, who was also aware of this plan, backed up Eo Shui's accusation. Even O Ling, King Nan Hai's own daughter, joined in, pleading with her father to spare her brother from the death penalty. In response, King Nan Hai vehemently denied any involvement in such a scheme and offered a strong defense. He argued to King Dong Hai and the other dragon kings that Sun Wukong's spirit had been sealed in his territory, but he wasn't working with the gods to achieve it. King Nan Hai pointed the finger at Eo Shui, stating that he was the real wrongdoer having taken part in a conspiracy with Sanzang. With the support of the majority of the dragon clans behind him, King Nan Hai displayed confidence and arrogance aiming to eliminate Eo Shui. After listening to the different sides of the story, King Dong Hai stood up and walked towards Eo Shui. With a tone of disappointment, he expressed his frustration with Eo Shui's actions, which had caused trouble and brought shame upon him. King Dong Hai referred to the incident when Eo Shui injured Yu Zhang, an action that had forced King Dong Hai to deal with the consequences of his son's behavior. The argument got worse as Eo Shui openly smirked at his dad. He accused King Dong Hai of being all about himself, caring only about looking good and not caring about his kids. Making it even worse, O Shui admitted that he deliberately created chaos to embarrass King Dong Hai and his dragon crew. This got King Dong Hai even more mad and he called O Shui worthless. Then he left it to the other dragon groups to decide what to do with him. King Dong Hai stormed out of the meeting, and the other dragon groups quickly decided that Eo Shui should be executed. They planned to do it the next day. This made King Nan Hai super angry after the trial. He took out his anger on Eo Ling, slapping her for standing up to him in front of everyone and defending Ao Shui. King Nan Hai scolded his daughter and told her she had to marry King Bei He's son. Even though she didn't want to, Ao Ling didn't have the guts to go against her dad's wishes, so she had to agree to the arranged marriage. Not long after that, Ao Ling was in a room looking for something really important. Finally, she found a shiny silver bracelet. Her face lit up with happiness, showing how much the bracelet meant to her. The scene switched to the past, young O Ling, upset about her broken bracelet. She goes to King Nan Hai to complain about her big brother Yi Long messing it up. But instead of helping, her dad just calls her a complaining girl. He even sticks up for Yi Long, thinking he could lead the dragon group someday. Feeling hurt and ignored, her dad tosses aside her bracelet and tells her to focus on school. Feeling like nobody cares about her, O Ling goes to a quiet lake to be alone and think. Then she hears a ruckus and finds Ao Shui getting bullied by other students. They threw his books in the lake and he had to fish them out. Eo Ling feels bad for him and says you should tell his dad about the bullying. But Eo Shui says it won't work. His dad, like King Nan Hai, never pays attention to him. He says even though it's tough, he prefers it that way. He likes being free to do his thing without listening to his dad. He picks up the bracelet King Nan Hai tosses and gives it back to Eo Ling. He tells her to live her life and not let others control her, like he's learned to do. But even with his encouraging words, years pass and O Ling still doesn't have the guts to make her own choices. She has to do whatever her dad says, even if she doesn't want to. But she doesn't forget her talk with Eo Shui. Eventually, she makes a big decision. She goes against her family and saves Eo Shui, who's about to be killed. This changes everything for Eo Ling. Finally, she finds the courage to take charge of her life and make her own path. Later that night, O Ling sneaked into the prison and swiped the key to Eo Shui's cell from the guards. Holding the key, she hurried to free Eo Shui. But the guards quickly caught on to their escape plan. They nabbed both Eo Shui and O Ling, tossing them into another cell, ending their bold getaway idea. At the same time, Xiao Yu was troubled by bad dreams that she thought might predict the future. San Zhao and his disciples saw how she was tossing in her sleep and got worried. They knew she needed sleep before their journey the next day, but they didn't want to wake her. Even though they were concerned, they decided to let her sleep and hopefully shake off the scary dreams. Soon Wukong got to the underworld, and there were lots of ghosties trying to steal his life energy. But Soon Wukong, even though he's dead, was super strong and beat them up real fast. He defeated them in a jiffy and cleared his way. Then this lady Grim Reaper showed up and said she'd help him while he's in the underworld. Soon Wukong asked for her name, but she said Grim Reapers don't have names. Since all the Grim Reapers looked alike, Soon Wukong named her Yume. Yume told Sun Wukong that as a Grim Reaper, she doesn't remember anything from her past life. 
She only knows she has to guide souls in the underworld. You may took Sun Wukong to a place called the Forgotten Bridge. It's where he could get reborn. On their way, they met the spirit of an old lady who was lost and couldn't accept that she was dead. You may explain to Sun Wukong that this lost spirit won't get reborn and will just disappear one day. Sun Wukong didn't let that bother him and kept going to the Forgotten Bridge. When they got there, you may told him that if he crossed it, his mind would get cleaned up and he'd forget everything from his old life. But you may had a heads up for him too. She said if he walked on that bridge, the underworld would suck up his life energy. If he lost it all before reaching the end, he'd be stuck there forever. Just as Yumei was getting ready to go, Sun Wukong had some questions for her. He asked why she wasn't going across the Forgotten Bridge to be reborn and how long she'd been a Grim Reaper. Yumei couldn't answer either of those. She told Sun Wukong she can't remember her past or how long she's been a Grim Reaper. Yumei told Sun Wukong that she'd keep doing her Grim Reaper thing until someone remembered her real name or helped her remember her past. After Yumei told her story, Sun Wukong promised to help her remember who she really was. But Yumei was doubtful. She said once he crossed the Forgotten Bridge, he'd forget everything, even her. Sun Wukong was really determined to keep his word. He felt he was different from regular people. He said he was the Monkey King, famous for being brave and smart. He wasn't like others who forget their past and promises. With strong belief, Sun Wukong said he'd always keep his promise, even after he was reborn. He thanked Yumei for her help and started walking on the Forgotten Bridge. While he was going, he came to a point where the path split into two. He wasn't sure which way to go, but then he saw a bright light on one of the paths. Without thinking twice, he followed it. While all this was going on, Xiao Yu with Sanzang and his disciples kept on traveling. They reached the place where the bull demon gang led by Niu Morin hung out. Before, Sanzang and his disciple had a big argument with Niu Morin and his bullfighters. It all started with a misunderstanding, but they sorted it out by talking and understanding each other. They put their differences behind and made peace. But now, when they got to the bull demon area, Sanzang and Zhu Bajie saw something worrying. The grassy land that used to be green was all dried up and the weather was way too hot for the season. At the same time, Bai Long was getting more and more worried about Xiao Yu. She'd been sleeping like a log for three days. He really wanted to wake her up, but Sanzang said no. He explained she was getting her strength back and would wake up when she was all better. While they were heading to where New Morin lived, something terrible happened. They got attacked by a bunch of mean bee demons. These bees were out for blood and came at them from all sides. Sanzang and his disciples got outnumbered really fast. As they fought against the bee demons out of the blue, Duji and his gang of bull demons showed up to help. With their help, they managed to beat back the bees and finally reached Mu Morin Castle. On the way, Sanzang noticed some of the bull demons were super sick and dying right there. He got worried and asked Duji what was up. But Duji told him not to stress, saying it was just a normal sickness. When they finally got to New Morin Castle, New Morin himself gave them a warm welcome. They had a big meal to celebrate, and New Morin was super happy to see them again after so many years. But New Morin's happiness didn't last. He thought Bai Long was Sun Wukong and asked him to show his real self. Sanzang quickly corrected him, saying Sun Wukong was in the underworld getting reborn. Just then, Xiao Yu woke up from her long nap and told Bai Long about a weird dream she had about Sun Wukong. While this was happening, Niu Morin couldn't shake off the sadness about what happened to Sun Wukong. He remembered their first meeting and thought of Sun Wukong as a tough opponent. He even thought about fighting him when he heard about Sanzang coming through his area. But that hope went away when he found out Sun Wukong died and was reborn. Sanzang explained that they were on a journey to return his sacred lotus to its right spot. But since it went against the god's wishes, he was worried they'd get caught and face trouble. To keep New Morin and his bull demon pals safe, Sanzang wanted to keep going on their journey without stopping. But New Morin wouldn't listen. He wanted them to stay in his village for a while, and he promised to help if any god attack happened. Then New Morin shared a personal story with Sanzang and his disciples. He told them he once introduced Sun Wukong to his younger sister, Xiao Mei. She fell super in love with Sun Wukong when she heard all his brave stuff. But Sun Wukong needed to keep going on his journey to the west, so their love story got cut short. Xiao Mei was really sad and couldn't make her dream of marrying him come true. When Sun Wukong and his friends left, Xiao Mei was heartbroken. She locked herself away for months, hoping he'd come back. New Morin tried everything to cheer her up, he even said if Sun Wukong finished his job, he'd marry her. But then Sun Wukong had a really bad ending. New Morin begged Sanzang to help him get Xiao Mei to move on. Meanwhile, the mean bee demons that attacked Sanzang and his gang went back to their home and told the queen bee what they saw. They said the bull demons were getting weak and that Xiao Yu was with Sanzang and his disciples. 
where the queen bee found out that Sansa had the sacred lotus, the thing the gods and demon clans were fighting over, she saw a chance to grab it for herself. She didn't wait and told her bee demons to attack the bull demon area. Just as Sansa and his disciples were thinking of how to talk to Xiao Mei, they were shocked to see her suddenly show up. This was surprising to the other bull demons too, because she was known for a strong temper. Then, Xiao Mei surprised everyone by bringing out a young demon, named Chen. She said he was her son of Sun Wukong. She even showed his monkey tail as proof. This took everyone back in time to when Sun Wukong and his buddies were at Miu Morin's place. Miu Morin had talked to Sun Wukong about his sister, Xiao Mei. She was shy and unsure around people who weren't from their clan. Miu Morin asked Sun Wukong to help boost her confidence so she wouldn't have to stay hidden at home. The next day, Sun Wukong finally met Xiao Mei, who was really shy and unsure of herself. At first, she felt super embarrassed around the legendary Sun Wukong, but he talked to her gently and got her to talk about her worries. She told him people stayed away because she seemed rude and was super strong. It made her feel weird and alone. Sun Wukong smartly told her to be herself and not try to impress people who won't get her. Then Sun Wukong took Xiao Mei for a walk and showed her how to have fun. Hanging out with him made her feel good and valued. While they were talking in a grassy spot, Mi Bees came and attacked them. Xiao Mei got ready to fight, but Sun Wukong stopped her. He faced the big bee boss and protected her. Seeing how brave and caring he was, Xiao Mei fell for Sun Wukong even more. When Mei came, she couldn't hold back her feelings anymore. She decided to tell Sun Wukong she loved him before he left the village for his journey. She hurried to the grassy spot all nervous and poured her heart out to him. With a lot of courage, Xiao Mei asked Sun Wukong to stay with her in the bull demon area. Sun Wukong kind of half said yes, but he was half asleep so he didn't really know what he was agreeing to. But later, he woke up and realized he made a mistake. But it was too late. Xiao Mei thought he agreed for real. Now she felt let down and hurt because Sun Wukong didn't keep his promise and left her. Even though she explained everything, Zhu Bajie and the others were unsure and thought she was making things up. But not everyone thought Xiao Mei was lying. Xiao Yu, feeling bad for another girl, stood up for her and defended her story. She said she regretted admiring Sun Wukong without knowing how he left Xiao Mei. On the other hand, San Zhang wasn't fully sure yet. He went to talk to Chen and was surprised to find out his monkey tail was fake. Right then, Chen's real parents showed up and asked Xiao Mei to give their son back. With her lies out, Xiao Mei didn't have anything to say. She got angry and attacked San Zhang and his disciples. She was so mad she used all of her strength, swinging her weapons around and saying she'd kill them if she didn't get Sun Wukong back. San Zai and his disciples didn't want to fight Miu Morin's sister, so they decided to run away to stay safe. A bit later, Miu Morin said sorry to San Zai and his disciples for Xiao Mei's attack. He said she got really touchy because of her deep love for Sun Wukong. Bai Long saw a weird wound on Miu Morin's arm and asked about it. Miu Morin said he got hurt fighting sneaky bees. While they were talking, the queen bee and her bee demons came down on them. They attacked because the sacred lotus got moved. Just like Xiao Yu warned, this made the bad demons stronger. The bee demons got so strong that they took over Niu Morin and his bull demons. During the fight, Duji almost got beat by a bee demon's sting. But Xu Wujing showed up right on time and saved him from getting hurt. While all this was happening, Bai Long was being attacked a lot by the bee demons. But suddenly, different bees showed up and grabbed Xiao Yu. Turns out the queen bee wanted Xiao Yu all along and the attack on San Zong and Niu Morin was just to distract them. They wanted to easily kidnap Xiao Yu, who was like this sacred lotus in person. Seeing Xiao Yu taken away made Bai Long super mad. He used his dragon spirit to fight the bees. But there were way too many sneaky bees and he couldn't save Xiao Yu from the queen bee. After the fight, San Zhang asked Miu Morin to rescue Xiao Yu. But Miu Morin said he never found the bee demon hive, even though he looked for years. And most of his fighters were hurt bad, so they couldn't beat so many bee demons. Just then, Du Ji came in and said a bee demon bit him. That let him know where their hive was. Deep inside the bee demon lair, the queen bee told Xiao Yu that she had a deal with the gods. They promised her a special magic pill that had been cooking for thousands of years if she gave them Xiao Yu. But once she got the pill, the queen bee broke her promise and told the bee demons to kill the messengers and take their blood. Even though when the messengers died, their souls went back to the heavenly kingdom thanks to Sha Xin. He always collected the souls of the warriors from the heaven to help them get reborn. When Sha Xin gathered the souls, he saw what happened to them and found out the Queen Bee was a traitor. He was about to leave his place when he bumped into a guy officer. The officer was carrying a weird scroll. Sha Xin was going to ask about it. But the officer said sorry and ran off before he could say anything. 
The officer hurried to the Jade Emperor's place to give him the scroll. It had info about where Rulay was. Rulay had taken the Sacred Lotus years ago. But when the Jade Emperor got the info, he got scared someone might find out, so he killed the officer. With the info, the Jade Emperor wanted to catch Rulai bad. He told the god Guang Mu Tan to find and get Rulai. And not just that, the Jade Emperor ordered Shun Tian to catch Rulai. But what the Jade Emperor and the other gods didn't know was that Sha Xin was secretly listening to their talk. Later, while Sha Xin was chilling in his palace, he remembered a time when he met Rulai before. Back then, after Erlang beat Sun Wukong, Sha Xin went to see Rulai. He asked Ru Lai about Sun Wukong, because Ru Lai seemed like one of the few gods who was close to Sun Wukong. Ru Lai told Sha Xin that Sun Wukong had a strong gut feeling. He could find things that even the gods couldn't. Ru Lai also said Sun Wukong might be telling the truth about the Heavenly Kingdom not being good anymore. But Sha Xin didn't like what Ru Lai said. He left the room because he didn't want it to make him doubt the Jade Emperor. Ru Lai said before Sha Xin left that he would prove his thoughts to him someday. Right now, Sha Xin is thinking about what Rulei said about the Jade Emperor's bad actions. He's starting to think maybe Rulei was telling the truth. Then Shun Tian and Guang Mu Tian reached the North Pole. They believe Rulei was hiding there because the Jade Emperor told them so. Guang Mu Tian starts shooting lightning everywhere to force Rulei out of hiding. Shun Tian, on the other hand, uses his smarts to find where Rulei is in the ice. They find him and he comes out ready to fight them. The big fight starts between Rulei and the two gods. They all really want to win. Shun Tian and Guang Mu Tian are strong, even though they're not as strong as Erlong. They work together to do attacks that put a lot of pressure on Ru Lai. But then they find out the Ru Lai they're fighting is fake. The real Ru Lai is meditating somewhere else. Shun Tian throws a fiery punch, but Ru Lai just blocks it easily. But Guang Mu Tian is different. His lightning is strong and can hurt Ru Lai's water powers. Guang Mu Tian knows this and is ready to use a big move to end the fight. And Shun Tian keeps Rulei busy with punches and kicks because he's good at close-up fighting. Rulei was having a hard time defending against Shun Tian's non-stop attacks. Seeing the opportunity, Guang Mu Tian used his super move. He turned into a giant and shot powerful lightning bolts. At the same time, Shun Tian also did his special move because he saw that Rulei was vulnerable. But something surprising happened. Shun Tian attacked Guang Mu Tian instead of Rulei. He knocked Guang Mu Tian out. Rulei was shocked and asked why Shun Tian did that. Shun Tian said his real reason. He was fighting to save the Heavenly Kingdom from becoming bad. He thanked Rulei for always working harder for the same goal. Rulei then asked why Shun Tian never spoke up about the Jade Emperor's bad stuff. Shun Tian said the Jade Emperor was his best friend and it was hard to decide what to do. He saw the Jade Emperor change, but he thought it was temporary. He found out the Jade Emperor wanted the Sacred Lotus power and even ordered Rulei's death. Shun Chiden realized the Jade Emperor had really changed. He couldn't let the darkness take over the Heavenly Kingdom. He promised to use all his strength to keep the kingdom safe and bright. The story went back in time, showing Shun Tian discovering a dead heavenly maid covered in a dark aura. He hurried to find Ru Lei, who was still a respected god in the Heavenly Kingdom. Shun Tian explained what happened, and Ru Lei had two ideas. One was that an evil spirit from the underworld might be trying to invade their kingdom but that spirit would need to be really powerful to break through their defenses and fight the gods. As Rulei investigated further, he realized something shocking. The darkness might have been growing within their kingdom without anyone knowing. Even though it sounded unbelievable, Rulei believed it was true. At the end of their journey, Xu and Tian told Rulei to leave quickly before they got caught by heavenly soldiers, but Xu and Tian wanted Rulei to keep fighting the darkness and protect the kingdom. He was willing to face the consequences of going against the Jade Emperor's orders. Finally, the heavenly soldiers caught up with them and arrested Shu and Tian. This surprised and upset the Jade Emperor because Shu and Tian, his close friend, had turned against him and joined forces with Ru Lei. While all this was happening, Ao Shui was taken to a hill where he was going to be sacrificed to Garuda, a fearsome beast. The Dragon Clan and Garuda had a big grudge against each other, so offering Ao Shui to Garuda felt like a huge betrayal to the dragons. Yilong and the other dragon warriors chained Ao Shui and left him on the hill. This place brought back memories of his childhood when he used to play with Yu Zhang around there. Yu Zhang had warned Ao Shui to stay far away from Garuda, because he was the dragon clan's biggest enemy. But Yu Zhang had also told Ao Shui that if they could get a piece of Garuda's feather, they'd earn a lot of respect within the clan. Yu Zhang had this dream of being part of the legendary dragon clan that could defeat Garuda and make him obey them. He wanted to defeat Garuda himself one day. Hearing this, Ao Shui admired his friend's bravery and strength. 
He also wanted to become as brave and strong as Yu Zhang and be part of the legendary Dragon Clan. Memories of his time with Yu Zhang ignited Ou Shui's determination to defeat Garuda and become a legendary dragon. He struggled against the chains, wanting to break free and show his bravery, but his efforts were in vain due to San Zhang's power that restricted him. As he was about to give up, Garuda appeared and spotted Ou Shui on the hill. Feeling hopeless, Ou Shui thought this was the end. Suddenly, Ou Ling appeared and freed him, surprising him. Ao Shue scolded Ao Ling for risking herself, but she was determined to save him no matter the danger. With Garuda aware of them, they had to face the beast. Ao Shue was shocked to face Garuda again, recalling their past encounter when he was a student. Yi Long and his friends then revealed that they tricked Ao Shue into getting Garuda's feather while the beast was asleep. Naively, Ao Shue fell for it, wanting to prove himself to the dragon clan. Ao Ling uncovered the plan and told Yu Zhang about it. She pleaded with him to save Ao Shue who had gone to the hill alone and unknowingly put himself in danger. Ao Shui reached the hill's peak and realized too late that Yi Long and his group had tricked him. Garuda was already aware of him and ready to attack. Right then, Yu Zhang arrived just in time to rescue Ao Shui. They tried to escape, but it became clear that both couldn't get away. Yu Zhang bravely told Ao Shui to flee while he fought Garuda. Despite their efforts, Ao Shui and Yu Zhang managed to escape from Garuda, but it came at a heavy price. During the fight, Yu Zhang suffered grave injuries that proved to be fatal. Word of the events spread to King Dong Hai, who was furious. He pointed the finger at Ao Shui, holding him responsible for Yu Zhang's injuries and even considered taking Ao Shui's life as punishment. But King Tian Yu stepped in before things got worse. He wouldn't assign blame for what happened to Yu Zhang and thanked Ao Shui for ensuring his safe return. In the present time, Ao Shui faced off against the Garuda, trying to fight back using his red lightning. Unfortunately, the beast's feathers protected it from his attacks. In a critical moment, Ao Ling showed up and saved Ao Shui from certain danger. But even though she was brave, the Garuda captured her and was about to devour her. With no time to waste, Ao Shui sprang into action, directing a powerful lightning attack directly into the Garuda's mouth. This unexpected move hurt the creature and released Ao Ling. Thanks to his quick thinking, Ao Shui saved his friend and scared off the monster. Yet, their victory was short-lived. The Garuda managed to grab Ao Ling and swallowed her whole. His heart-wrenching sight filled Ao Shui with anger, and he unleashed a powerful attack against the Garuda's three tails. At first, Ao Shui succeeded in fending off the monster's tails. However, they quickly recovered and counterattacked, leaving Ao Shui badly hurt. Despite his injuries and the pain, he didn't give up. He was determined to save both Yu Zhang and Ao Ling, two people he deeply cared about. Just when things seemed bleak, a bright lightning flash cut through the sky marking the arrival of reinforcements. Ao Shui clung to hope, determined not to be defeated. The scene then shifted to the past, where Yu Zhang was seen struggling to walk due to Garuda's attack. Despite his injury, Yu Zhang was determined to continue training and improving. Ao Shui was burdened with guilt, knowing that his actions had caused Yu Zhang serious injuries. Summoning his courage, he approached Yu Zhang to apologize and express his gratitude for saving him. Ao Shui was worried that Yu Zhang might hold a grudge against him, but he still went ahead to offer his apology and thanks. To Ao Shui's surprise, Yu Zhang responded by assuring him that there were no hard feelings. He emphasized that they were friends and that friends were there for each other when in need. However, Ao Shui was not easily convinced. Frustration and anger overwhelmed him and he pushed Yu Zhang away, rejecting any form of mercy. He expressed regret for having trusted Yu Zhang's promise that he would become the legendary dragon who could defeat Garuda. Feeling trapped and powerless, Ao Shui's situation worsened. The dragon clan turned against him, including his own father who wanted to kill him. Yu Zhang tried to console Ao Shui and encourage him not to give up, but Ao Shui's frustration led him to snap at Yu Zhang. He pointed out that Yu Zhang always received praise and couldn't understand the constant insults Ao Shui faced from the dragon clan, even from his own father. Despite his sadness at parting ways with his best friend Yu Zhang, Ao Shui made the difficult decision to leave the dragon clan. After leaving the dragon clan, Ao Shui took a dark path seeking revenge. He caused destruction and took lives to bring shame upon his father and the clan that had rejected him. For his crimes, Sha Xin punished Ao Shui, turning him into a horse for company Sanzong's journey to the west. Ao Shui's criminal behavior didn't stop even after their mission ended. Sanzong had to restrain him and seal his powers. When Sanzong prepared to return the sacred lotus to its birthplace, he released Ao Shui and offered to lift the seal if Ao Shui agreed to join the journey. During his journey, Ao Shui met Bai Long, who possessed Yu Zhang's dragon spirit and shared the sad news of Yu Zhang's death. In the present, Ao Shui believed he had fallen victim to Garuda, 
but woke up tied and about to be roasted by a fire. He realized Nanjia, an ancient dragon, was there to drink his blood. Nanjia explained that the dragon clan had a destiny to challenge and defeat each other to determine the strongest dragon. Nanjia was saddened by how the dragon clan had forgotten their true heritage. Without hesitation, Nanjia grabbed a dagger and aimed it at Ao Shui's neck, intending to drink his blood. After drinking Ao Shui's blood, Nanjia saw all of Ao Shui's life events. His childhood as an outcast in the dragon clan, his near-fatal encounter with his father, and his journey with Sun Wukong and others to help Sanzang retrieve scriptures from the west. Nanjia realized returning the sacred lotus wouldn't instantly make the world safe. So Nanjia set Ao Shui free and transferred his pure energy to him until Ao Shui passed out. Ao Shui woke up on a floating island in the clouds. Nanjia was there and changed his mind about killing Ao Shui. Nanjia knew Ao Shui's name and passed from drinking his blood. He explained that this place was called the Sky Beyond the Clouds, Nanjia's home for centuries. Ao Shui now had to serve Nanjia as thanks for saving him from Garuda. However, Ao Shui, rebellious as always, didn't want to serve and got ready to attack Nanjia. But his lightning power turned green and he felt stronger. Nanjia said he gave Ao Shui his energy to save him, and that he had been lonely for a hundred years and Ao Shui was the first dragon he talked to in all that time. Learning this, Ao Shui was curious and asked Nanjia what he wanted him to do. Nanjia explained that he needed Ao Shui's help to get back this sacred lotus, which was now in the hands of Garuda. This lotus held the universe's life energy and was vital for maintaining balance. Being the Dragon Clan's ancestor, Nanjia said it was Ao Shui's duty to assist in recovering the sacred lotus and restoring harmony. Meanwhile, King Don Hai was in a meeting with King Nan Hai, discussing the idea of forming an alliance with the Heavenly Kingdom. King Nan Hai argued his case, but King Don Hai remained cautious. He wanted to weigh the benefits of allying with former foes, the gods. During the meeting, Yu Tao, present with his father, voiced concerns about trusting the gods due to their deceitful nature. King Dong Hai decided to consult other dragon kings before making a final choice. Suddenly, a soldier arrived with news of Ao Shui. Against all odds, Ao Shui had survived his death sentence and was now in the palace, sitting on the throne. Shocked and angry, King Dong Hai and Yun Tao ordered soldiers to capture Ao Shui and bring him to justice. They rushed back to the palace, wondering how Ao Shui could have cheated death. When they arrived at the palace, they were shocked by what they found. Ao Shui revealed three feathers from the mythical Garuda birds, proof that he had defeated them. According to the Dragon Clan's tradition, whoever conquers the Garuda and takes its feathers becomes the Dragon Knight and is forgiven for any past mistakes. This left King Dong Hai and the others with no choice but to follow tradition and release Ao Shui since he had become the Dragon Knight. With this settled, Ao Shui left the palace and headed to a nearby hill. There he recalled a conversation he had with Na Jia. After saving him, Nanjia removed Sanzang's seal from Ao Shui's body, making him even stronger. Nanjia had a plan and needed Ao Shui's body to carry it out because he would weaken if he stayed in the human world for too long. He asked Ao Shui to get the sacred lotus from Sanzang and bring it to him. Fueled by his anger over how he was treated by Sanzang, Ao Shui agreed. But Nanjia was cautious and mentioned that he had saved Ao Ling too. He'd threatened to harm her if Ao Shui betrayed him. Hearing this, Ao Shui became furious, but his attack on Nanjia was stopped due to their huge power difference. With no other option to save Ao Ling, Ao Shui reluctantly agreed to follow Nanjia's orders and set off to find Sanzang and his disciples. In the meantime, Sanzang and his group kept on their mission to find the hidden hive of the bee demons and rescue Xiaoyu. Niu Morin and his warriors supported them in this quest. They arrive at a place filled with dark energy, which made Sanzang think they were close to the bee demon's nest where Xiaoyu was held. Thanks to Juji's amazing skills, they pushed forward on the path of the demons, determined to find the hive and save their friend. Despite Duji's injuries from a previous attack by the bee demons, he didn't give up. He was resolute on seeking revenge for the suffering endured by his bold demon clan over the years. Soon after, everyone was surprised to see the queen bee and her army of bee demons preparing for battle. Both sides were ready to fight with all their might to win. While the bee demons weren't as individually strong as the bold demons, their sheer numbers put Niu Morin and his warriors at a disadvantage, making it hard for them to handle a swarm. Meanwhile, Samanzang had a plan to secure their victory. He told his disciples to protect him while he cast a spell to cleanse the evil aura around them. As Samanzang started the spell, his body emitted a bright golden light. But this made him vulnerable to attacks, so Zhu Bajie and the others had to defend him. Soon after, the beast stealth who had been confident in defeating Mu Moren and his warriors started to weaken. One by one, they fell from the sky, affected by the powerful positive energy coming from Sanzang. 
The Queen Bee realized the monk's threat because his spell not only suppressed the evil energy that powered the bee demons, but also boosted positive energy, making Miu Morin and his group stronger. In a desperate move, the Queen Bee ordered her minions to attack Sanzang with everything they had. However, Sanzang's disciples were ready to counter the assault. Bai Long, who had mastered Yu Zhang's dragon spirit, effortlessly turned the tide, driving the bee demons away. Despite the success, Sanza reminded Bai Long to stick to the plan and save Xiao Yu while they kept the Queen Bee and her minions busy. Armed with this new task, Bai Long left the battle and relied on his instincts to find Xiao Yu. The Queen Bee was surprised to learn that Bai Long was a wolf demon with the power of the dragon spirit. She had never seen a demon who could wield another clan's power as skillfully as Bai Long had used Yu Zhang's dragon spirit. Nonetheless, the Queen Bee had to face reality as Miu Moren and his warriors gained the upper hand, leading to a final face-off between Miu Moren and the Queen Bee. With Sanzang's positive energy fueling him, Miu Moren regained his strength and readied himself to deliver a decisive blow to the Queen Bee. But just as he was about to strike, an unexpected twist unfolded. Duji stepped in to intercept Miu Moren and attacked him. This shocking turn of events surprised everyone as Duji was previously Miu Moren's trusted ally. Initially, they thought the evil aura might have influenced him, but Duji denied this. He revealed his dissatisfaction with Miu Moren's leadership, accusing him of being weak and failing to protect the Bull Demon clan from frequent attacks. Meanwhile, Bai Long's persistence finally paid off as he located the beehive. Despite the bee's attempts to hinder his progress, he fearlessly charged into the hive. Inside, Xiao Yu valiantly fought against the attacking bee demons, but her energy waned and she eventually fell. Just in the nick of time, Bai Long arrived and rescued her. Amidst the heated argument between Miu Moren and Du Ji, they decided to resolve their dispute through combat. The Queen Bee saw an opportunity and sneaked up on Miu Moren, implanting her eggs into his body. Despite this, Miu Moren remained defiant and expressed his disappointment in Du Ji for betraying their clan and siding with their enemies. Du Ji, however, showed no remorse for his actions despite Miu Moren's disapproval. He had planned to overthrow Miu Moren and take control, but the Queen Bee had her own agenda. She commanded her minions to attack Duji and drain him of his blood. Caught off guard for a moment, Miu Morin swiftly recovered and broke free from the Queen Bee's grip. He confidently stated that he wouldn't let himself be defeated by weaker opponents like the Bee Demons. With determination, Miu Morin launched a powerful attack on the Queen Bee, bringing her reign to an end. The surviving Bee Demons, seeing their leader defeated, chose to retreat in defeat, realizing they couldn't win. Just when victory seemed assured for the bull demons, Sanzang stood up and cautioned his disciples to be prepared for the worst. Suddenly, a dark and malevolent aura enveloped Miu Morin's body, the same energy the Queen Bee had given him. Sanzang had noticed a strange wound on Miu Morin's arm earlier and feared that this energy would transform Miu Morin into a demonic being. He approached Miu Morin and cast a spell to prevent further harm and contain the evil energy. In the underworld, Yume was guiding a young woman's spirit to the Forgotten Bridge, telling her to cross it and be reborn. Her mind wandered back to the conversation she had with Sun Wukong earlier. Lost in her thoughts, another Grin Reaper appeared and scolded her for almost neglecting her duties. Even after the warning, Yume's curiosity about her past remained. She secretly used a device that could show the memories of souls crossing the Forgotten Bridge. She wanted to uncover Sun Wukong's memories and learn more about herself. As Sanzang worked to prevent Miu Morin from turning evil, Xiao Mei's soul was consumed by the dark energy and tried to take over Miu Morin's body. The evil aura spread to the other bull demons, making them hostile towards Sanzang and his disciples. Seeing the urgency, Sanzang told Zhu Bajie and Xiao Wujing to defend against the attacking bull demons while he focused on purifying Miu Morin. He created a sacred circle to contain Miu Morin and performed rituals to remove the dark energy. With all his efforts, Sanzang aimed to save Miu Morin and end the crisis. The scene changed, showing a young girl named Xiao Mei. She was crying, feeling sad because everyone avoided her. She had strong powers that she couldn't control, and this made her accidentally destroy things around her. When she felt most down, Niu Morin's spirit appeared beside her. He spoke kindly and told Xiao Mei that she would learn to control her powers one day. He assured her that they would meet again in the future. In the present time, San Zhang keeps trying to show Niu Morin that he's a reliable friend who's always there to help. He warns Miu not to let the dark energy take over him. But Miu Morin's doubts grow stronger when he breaks through the protective circle Sanzang made and attacks him. Sanzang has no choice but to use physical strength to snap Miu Morin out of his trance. As Sanzang and his disciples struggle against Miu Morin and his warriors, 
who are controlled by the dark energy, Bai Long finally shows up to help. Using his dragon spirit power, Bai Long manages to temporarily freeze New Morin, giving everyone a short break. When New Morin starts moving again and threatens Bai Long, Ao Shui suddenly arrives to protect him with his new abilities. At the same time, Sanzan gets ready to use his strongest technique, determined to bring New Morin back to his senses. Inside New Morin's mind, Xiao Mei was getting consumed by dark energy. She said sorry to San Zong and the rest, admitting she fell into the darkness because she thought Sun Wukong had died. But then San Zong surprised Xiao Mei with some news. Sun Wukong was actually alive. He had to keep this a secret because Sun Wukong was hiding to protect Xiao Mei from the bull demons. Hearing this, Xiao Mei got even more determined to break free from the darkness. She fought to take control again, wanting to confirm that Sun Wukong was really alive. Her effort paid off and she managed to break free from the darkness just as Miu Morin's body transformed into her own. This left Zubajie and the others shocked and puzzled. Sanzan explained that Miu Morin and Xiao Mei were the same as Miu Morin's soul had taken over Xiao Mei's body. With the dark energy gone, the evil power controlling the bull demons vanished and they regained their awareness. Finally, Xiao Yu woke up, surprised to find herself at Miu Morin's place after being held by the bee demons. Bai Long came and explained everything, saying they had won against the bee demons. Xiao Mei couldn't hold back her excitement and quickly asked San Zhang about Sun Wukong's location. San Zhang confirmed that the Monkey King was alive and assured Xiao Mei they'd be together that night. This news made Xiao Mei extremely happy, and she couldn't wait to meet Sun Wukong once more. In the evening, Xiao Mei walked to the agreed spot, her heart racing with excitement. There she spotted Sun Wukong facing away from her. Approaching him, she asked why he had left without saying goodbye. Soon Wukong said sorry, mentioning their urgency to continue their journey to the west for the scripture. He shared that he now had a new mission, returning the scripture to its rightful place. The chaos caused by this sacred lotus being moved had affected both the bull demon clan and earth. Only by restoring the scripture could they prevent a disaster. Xiao Mei was determined to accompany Soon Wukong, but he declined. He felt that the bull demon clan needed a leader like her to help them recover and he asked her to stay and wait for him. After their conversation, Sun Wukong swiftly departed, but it turned out that it was actually Xiu Wujing disguised as Sun Wukong, following San Zhang's orders. The next day, San Zhang and his disciples continued their journey, leaving the bull demon clan's territory behind. Ao Shui, who had rejoined the team after his dragon clan duties, approached Bai Long and inquired about the sacred lotus he was guarding. Unaware of the surprising transformation of the sacred lotus into Xiaoyu, Ao Shui didn't know the truth. Bai Long had decided to keep this information from him. Meanwhile, in the Heavenly Kingdom, Sha Xin was in a significant meeting with Erlong. The topic was the betrayal by Xu Tian and Ru Lei, who were still on the loose. Suddenly, the meeting's seriousness was interrupted by the twelve chimes of the giant Heavenly Palace bells. This indicated a significant event, the rebirth of the powerful monkey king, Sun Wukong. And so this marks the end of the tale. The upcoming chapters of Sun Wukong's journey lie ahead. Will he fulfill his mission and rescue the world from danger? Keep an eye out for our next recap video to discover the answers.